Hello, it's Alden. Here's how I combine footage and 3D assets in Blender to make everything in my room float using Blender and After Effects. This entire project is available on my Patreon, so you can download this Blender file, play around, see all of the settings and stuff that I have, pick it apart, and learn from there. First, I filmed myself sitting on the couch and turning on this green light. It's this newer RGB light that I have. I wanted to have some practical light in addition to the visual effects because that's just gonna sell it better. Originally, this was supposed to be a branded thing for TikTok. The brand didn't actually end up liking it, but jokes on them because the video and its tutorial did pretty well. But anyways, I brought that clip into After Effects um, and it's time to cut myself out. So things that are stationary like the couch, I can can just use the pen tool. And then for my body, I first tried the rotor brush tool. Now I really have a, I want to call it a love hate, but I, the rotor brush tool always frustrates me. I find that it works really well in some very, very specific cases. I thought this was was going to be one because there was just a plain wall behind me, but it really wanted to stick to that shadow. Uh, I'm not sure why, but um, every single frame I was having to adjust it. And so I kind of just gave up on the rotor brush and decided I'm going to do it manually with Mocha. So I use Mocha Pro, but you can use Mocha for After Effects. It just comes already installed. And what I have found to be the most helpful when rotoscoping is first to track everything and then do a separate mask and have the mask and the track separate. So first I kind of do these rough outlines of my head and my arm um, as separate tracks, just because all of their movements are gonna be a little bit different. And then I'm gonna create another mask, set it to use the motion from the track and then go through and keyframe it as needed. From Mocha Pro, you can export your mat as a mask. And then back here in After Effects, I can create a solid and then paste that Mocha mask. And then I can use all of the tools like expansion, feather, everything that you can do with a mask in After Effects, but it's all tracked properly. Um, here is this footage masked out. I'm just gonna parent it all to a null and rotate it a bit just so it's level and then export it as a PNG sequence with transparency. Inside Blender, gonna import that PNG sequence as image as planes. And uh, that's just a feature you can go in your preferences and turn it on. Uh, make sure it's set to image sequence. And the next thing I'm going to do is take this cube and kind of size it for the couch so that it can create a, sh a shadow. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is build the room. So I'm just going to bring in a plane, bring that floor down um, and kind of roughly create the room that was there. Now you could go through and use like FSpy and UV projection and do an accurate version of the room. But because I wanted all of the items in the room to be 3D so I can control them and make them float and stuff, I decided to do everything here in Blender. The next step that I'm gonna do is just match the lighting that I had in production. So over here, I had this green light. There was kind of a lamp up above my head. So I'm gonna add another area light there. And to bring in some models, I'm gonna use this free uh, Blender add-on called Blender Kit. Uh, you can download this uh, add-on from their website. And right within Blender, you have access to a bunch of 3D models. So instead of needing to go to a website, searching, downloading, and importing it, you can literally just browse and click. And then you have those assets right in your scene. It's a little limited to what's free, but overall, uh, I haven't really had a problem. So I brought in this coffee table, and then I'm also gonna bring in a lamp, something that kind of looks similar to the real uh, overhanging lamp that I had. I also wanted to find a rug that was similar to the rug. Um, it's just like this Ikea rug, but um, I couldn't find it at first. Eventually later in the tutorial, you'll see the rug switch because I did find one in Blender Kit that had the right design. But for most of the tutorial, you're gonna see this rug. Um, but basically everything in the room came from Blender Kit. So it is a very, very helpful add-on. I definitely did some iterating with the animation here. At first, I kind of wanted the whole room to fly away and almost have me on the couch sort of floating in space or something. So I was adding like a wave modifier to the rug and use shape keys to make the floor kind of turn into this mountain range or something. But I couldn't really get anything that I ended up liking. So I simplified the concept uh, just to have things in the room start to float. The other thing I originally wanted to have was a bunch of 
pop-ups throughout the room, kind of like you're on this app and you're just seeing a bunch of memes and things. And so I wanted to try and use geometry nodes to create this sphere of memes pulling from a collection. I found that I didn't have enough control over it. So eventually I do nix this as well, but I think that's hopefully helpful to see that uh, like most things, it's a creative process and there's a lot of, I find myself doing a lot of trial and error along the way. Uh, also a side note, I'm using cycles so I can have the camera set to panoramic so I can get a super wide angle. The next thing I wanted to do is make the walls themselves start to glitch using emission so it creates a light that shines on everything in the room. And uh, that I thought was really gonna tie this whole effect together. And I was really, really determined to build it within Blender using the Voronoi texture, using the Waves texture, mixing and matching and animating different uh, elements of them, using a noise modifier here in the graph view, just trying to make it as glitchy as possible. Uh, ultimately, it wasn't really looking as glitchy as I would like. I know there's a way to do that, but for the life of me, I could not figure it out. So I decided to take this um, glitch video clip that I have and kind of mix that in there just because it gave like a proper glitch aesthetic. Um, and as I was playing with it, I realized I'm just going to use that glitch video and take out all of the other uh, Blender stuff. So I kind of scaled it differently, adjusted the colors, and kind of tailored it to this green color that I wanted for this scene. But uh, ultimately, it is a glitch video texture and not built within Blender. If you know any tutorials for how to make really awesome glitches in Blender, please let me know in the comments below because I would love to be able to do everything everything within Blender and not have to rely on other like video clips or packs or anything like that. And the glitch on the walls is being animated by using a mix shader here in the material and animating from the wall material to this emission texture that's using the glitch video. So it's just kind of fading from one to the other. Now that I have my shot and my animation all concepted and ready, uh, I'm just gonna go back in and add some more models using Blender Kit just to fill out the room a little bit more and have more elements that can float up. And to do the floating, I am just keyframing the Z position and the rotation, just having it slowly rise a little bit. It's not a physics simulation at all. Of course, I have to add a batleth. If you know, you know. And that's how I ended up with this um, animation. It was a lot of fun. It didn't take me too terribly long. I think it only took me maybe a couple days um, just spending a few hours here and there. Uh, the reason it was so fast was definitely because of Blender Kit and being able to build a 3D environment so quickly. 